story time about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So a little background information, I was 14 and in eighth grade. And there was this boy that I really liked who lived like 10 minutes away from me. So the one night he asked me if I wanted to hang out. And my mom was strict about me not hanging out with people after 7 o'clock at night. Especially a boy. I wasn't even allowed to hang out with boys. And my grandma, my mom, and my brother and I all lived together. And we all had our own rooms. Mine was on the first floor of the house, so I snuck out the window and I went and hung out with him. So I snuck out at around 3 and came back at around 4 a.m. And my grandma comes into my room to wake me up for school. And I guess that I had been laying on my side and my hair was like pulled up. Because literally all I remember waking up to is her smacking me up out of my sleep and screaming at me. Because there was a hickey on my neck. She's like, I'm telling your mom whenever she gets home. Your window's gonna be screwed shut. And I keep telling her it's not a hickey, so she calls my brother over. And he's like, yeah, that's definitely a hickey. Like for part two. Part two about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, she's like, I'm telling your mom and I keep telling her that it's not a hickey. And thankfully my mom already went to work. She had work at 6 a.m. So I got on the bus, I go to school and I'm talking to my friend and telling her about how I'm literally gonna be crucified whenever I get home. And she told me about how her older sister was in like the same situation that I'm in now. So she texted her older sister asking what she did because she never got caught. And I was like, okay, well, if she used makeup, my mom's gonna find out because she's not dumb. Well, apparently her older sister burnt herself with a curling iron. Yes, literally burnt herself, but she ended up getting away with it. So fast forward, I get home at around three o'clock and I sneak in through the back door so that way my grandma won't see that I came in the house because she literally would have made me sit in the living room until my mom got home. So I go upstairs and I burn myself with a curling iron, which is not fun. Like for part three. Part three about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, I snuck in through the back door so that way my grandma wouldn't see me because if she saw me, she would have made me wait in the living room with her until my mom got home. So you know, burnt myself with a curling iron and my mom gets home. And since I'm on the first floor, I can literally hear my grandma talking to my mom and my brother of course my grandma's like yeah she has hickeys all over her neck which is literally an exaggeration because there was one one small one so my mom calls me out to the living room i go out and she's like all right show it to me and i'm like show you what she's like don't play stupid your grandma already told me the whole situation and i was like mom i literally burnt myself with a curling iron and my grandma's like screaming and freaking out because i'm lying she's like you better tell your mother the truth right now da -da 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 -da. so i show the burn to my mom she looks at my grandma and she's like so you're gonna tell me that's not a burn on her neck and she was like that's not how it looked this morning blah 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 so i got away with it but now my grandma literally stalks me to see if i'm doing anything wrong so she can tell my mom Story time about how my husband keeps borrowing money from me and now wants access to my bank accounts. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story time. on my Instagram. My husband and I have been married for six years. When we first got married, we were really young, so we were living with our parents. We didn't actually move out from my parents' house up until two years ago. In fact, I don't think we're actually adults yet. We both still act like we're teenagers. I'm 24 and he's 25. I recently got myself a really good job. He, on the other hand, has never had a really good job. He does a lot of odd jobs here and there, a lot of catering. He also models because he's extremely good looking. So now that I got myself a job, I wanted to get my own apartment. But of course, I have to include my husband because we're married. He actually ended up getting an okay job. We decided to split the rent and everything was going fine. But then he got laid off and this is when things started going bad. He started asking me for money because he wasn't getting paid anymore. Every now and then he would ask me for like 10 bucks or he would ask me for my debit card. At first it was just small purchases like going to the supermarket or going to Starbucks. So I gave him my card. One day I'm checking my bank account and I realize that he bought himself a $600 watch. You'll never guess what he said when I confronted him. Part two is up. St story time about how my husband keeps borrowing money from me and now wants access to my accounts. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story time. Send me on Instagram. When I confronted him about buying a $600 watch with my money, he told me that he has every single right to use my money as much as I do. And even though I'm the one earning the money, he is my husband so he can do whatever he wants with it. I got so angry I picked up one of my crystals and threw it right at his head. Luckily it missed him but it did scratch his ear. He went berserk and accused me of trying to kill him. He ran over to the ER with a scratch on his ear. I went straight to my parents house and I told him what was happening. Obviously my parents agree with me that he should not be spending $600 of my money on a stupid watch. And they told me to take away any access he had to my money. So I took away my debit card and my credit card from him. We both ended up apologizing to each other so for a few months it was okay. He had a few jobs so he had some spending money for himself. But then he got fired again. That's when he asked me politely to add him to my bank account so that he could get his own debit card from my account. To be honest, at first I thought it was okay, but I didn't say yes or no. I called my parents and they told me absolutely not. And when I told my husband, he threatened to divorce me. He says that I'm neglecting his needs. Part three is up.
Story time about how my husband keeps borrowing money from me and now wants access to my bank accounts. This claim is not my story time, it's not on Instagram. That's when he threatened to divorce me because I wouldn't give him access to my checking account. He said that I was neglecting him. That's when he told me that if the tables were turned, he would be expected to give me money. And you know what? Totally true. But at the same time, I can't allow him to just buy $600 watches. He then made a promise to me that he would only use the money for necessities. So for example, paying bills or anything like that. Although we already have our bills on auto pay, so I'm not sure how that would work. So I took him to the bank and I added him to my account. I know you all must think I'm so stupid right now. And you know what? I am. Two days later after he got his debit card, I checked his bank account and he had signed up to three different OnlyFans accounts. That's a total of $50 a month coming out of my paycheck plus all the things that he buys on the website. I confronted him again and he told me that it was just for fun. And that because I'm at work and he's home alone, he needs something to entertain himself with. Then he told me that if he didn't have the OnlyFans accounts, he would probably end up just cheating on me. And then he asked me, what do you prefer? Me watching stuff online or me actually going out and finding women? This is where I need your help. I see his point, but I'm not sure if this is like manipulation or something. He really seems so genuine and he's always doing my laundry, cooking, and cleaning up for me. He even rubs my feet when I get home from work. And I haven't told my parents about this. I think they'll hit the roof. Should I let him have access to OnlyFans and use my money? Or should I put a stop to it and risk him cheating? What should I do? I'm not letting my daughter ride any more roller coaster rides at the State Fair of Texas. Story time. So we went to the State Fair Friday night. Call me is scary, but way too many people have died doing roller coasters. So I'm like, I wasn't going to let her. But Jacob was like, oh, let her go on this ride. It's not too high up. She's going to be fine. Wrong. But she's on the ride. The ride is about to take off. I noticed that he's not checking if everybody is locked in. So I was like, yo, check that my daughter is locked in. Call me crazy, but better safe than sorry. All of a sudden, the machine shuts down. So I asked the man that's like moving the machine, what's wrong? Why did it shut off? He's like, oh, we just routinely restarted. Frantically, they keep trying to turn it on. And now I'm spiraling. If this shuts off, man, air as it's spinning, the locks are going to stop working and one of the kids is going to fly out. So I was like, nope, take my daughter out. He looked at me like I was asking him to solve the equation for the universe. I don't care if I look crazy. Take her out. I'm not going to go in there, okay? Now all the parents are freaking out because they keep trying to turn it on. Knowing well enough, it's not oh, working. Hell, it's weird. Oh, you got me messed up. Why the bad apple for not complying with our school rules? I moved from Pennsylvania to Texas. Unlike Pennsylvania, Texas says the Pledge of Allegiance for the U.S. as well as the Pledge to the Texas flag. We did nothing like that in Pennsylvania. This was such a new and weird thing. I didn't want to do it. I went as far as to just sit down for it. I was eventually called down to the principal's office to have a conversation about apparently it was against some school rule and I needed to start reciting the pledge. I politely said, I'm not gonna do that. And he was firm that it was against the rules to not say the pledge to the Texas flag. I then said, look, I have freedom of speech and I'm still not gonna do it. And if you still insist that I have to, I'm gonna consult an attorney. After I threatened with a lawsuit, told me to have a great day and go back to class. I felt really good and I felt like I was in the right, but I've always wondered, was I the bad apple? 